Hello everyone, welcome to Toxic Google. I'm Kevin Velk. I'm Rebecca Prozan. And we're here today to talk about the new movie Free Held, and we have Ellen Page and Julianne Moore. So, uh, you know, this, this story is, it's a beautiful love story mm -hmm. um, that tells the story of, a true story of uh, Laurel Hester, uh, who is a very decorated, well-known, respected uh, police officer, a detective uh, in New Jersey, and uh, develops lung cancer and uh, uh, stage four, and wants to pass her benefits on to Stacy, mm -hmm. uh, her partner Stacy, and is not allowed to. So it's about that struggle and that fight, trying to get that approval from the freeholders, um, this governing council. So um, very, very powerful story, and I kind of want to talk about um, just what led you both to this project. Sure. Um, okay, well, when I was a, a freeheld, uh, there's a documentary of the same name made by Cynthia Wade, which is incredible, and you should check it out. And uh, it won an Oscar in 2008 for Best Short Subject. So shortly after that, Michael Schamberg and Stacey Scher, producers on the project, sent me the documentary and asked if I would like to attach myself to play Stacey. And I watched it, and I was weeping. I was so moved. And I said yes immediately. Um, and, and then they were very gracious and generous and involved me in the development process. And so we found Ryan Nut Ron Nicewaner wrote the screenplay, and then Pete Solid, and then Julie. Yeah, like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because you were involved for seven years, and mm -hmm. you're a producer on the film as well. Mm -hmm. So um, the casting of just Julianne, so what stage was that in? That was. Uh, I mean, that was when we were shooting the film a year ago. We shot, yeah, And you this, yeah, said this, yes. In February. Yeah, yeah so February. this time last year we were actually shooting the film um, in, in New York. But yeah, it was February when I first um, met with Pete and talked to Ellen. And yeah. So it wasn't that long ago, really, a year and a half or so, yeah. I guess. Mm -hmm. There are thousands of same sex couples that have had similar, unfortunately, similar situations to this. Mm -hmm. Was there something? about the story itself or the documentary when you saw it that like you just said like the light bulb went off and you're like I have to do this. Well, well the, the documentary is, is pretty extraordinary. I think the degree of, of intimacy with which you experience it is, is unusual. The fact that they allowed a documentarian in their home mm -hmm. um, every single day in the, during the last year of Laurel's life is, is uh, it's, it's very unusual. So I think you I think you get a, just a, a palpable sense of who they are and what they were up against and what and how and, and what discrimination really means. You know, what 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 are the costs of of, uh, of something that seems innately political when you realize that they're talking about losing their house? Mm -hmm. And specifically as it relates to the detective, mm -hmm. your character, um, she seems like because I saw it on Monday, yeah. that she would be sort of a difficult character to get to know and to learn about. Um, right. She's complex. She is. Yeah. She's a little distant. Um, she's a cop um, right. and not someone who is necessarily forthcoming about who she is. How did you uh, wrap your head around that as an actress? Well, interestingly enough, the cop part was the hardest part for me. <laughs> the relationship part was easy. I mean, you know, that, that I understand. That's something I think we're all familiar with, you know, who, how you fall in love with somebody and build a life with them. But for me, being a police officer was really, really different. And, and of course, I had the laurel in the dock, you know, um, and I, so I had the Laurel who was not well, but I did not know the Laurel who, who was healthy. Mm. And that was really provided to me by Stacey Andre herself, who opened her home to us and showed us all these newspaper clippings and photographs and, um, and shared her memories. And also Dane Wells, who was uh, Laurel's partner, police partner, and Laurel's brother and sister. And so with all of that information, I was able to kind of figure out who, the, who that Laurel was. And, and what was interesting is that the, the, I, think, I think because she was such a, she was such a police officer, really believed in the justice system, really believed in doing the right thing. That kind of moral fiber, the, her ethics were, were truly what drove her to do the right thing for the woman that she loved. And, you know, is there, the, obviously this is, you know, based on true story, these are real characters. Is there a sense of fear or, you know, real responsibility because you are adapting and you are actually acting as real people who really existed and do still exist? For sure. I think we all felt a sense of responsibility <clears throat> and, um, you know, wanted, you know, Stacy and Dane to feel um, 
safe, essentially, to, to, to have them know that our goal was to make something as truthful and as honest and as authentic as possible. Um, and so we always just, we would text Stacy or, you know, communicate with her while we were shooting. And she came to set for a day. She's in, you can see her in the film at, uh, at the end at a certain point. And yeah, so um, I think you feel a sense of responsibility and that's probably what we mm -hmm. put most of our thought into, I would say. Yeah. 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 I think you touched on this a little bit, but how involved was she in the development of the film? Like, was she, you know, on set? Were you asking her for advice? Like, how did that work? She was really, <laughs> she was really involved. I mean, she, uh, Ron Nicewander spent a lot of time, uh, the screen, screenwriter, with uh, Stacy and with Dane and with Stephen Goldstein, who Steve Carell plays. And, um, and then she, we both spent a lot of time with her, and mm -hmm. she was just so um, kind to us. And as you can imagine, a lot of uh, the conversations are difficult and yeah. emotional, you know, the ones about the good times and the ones about mm -hmm. the difficult times, and it's all, um, you know, her having to bring that back up to the surface. It's sort of interesting, because she's also seems unwilling to participate through the movie. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's almost sweet that she, and maybe that's not the right word, but that, and compelling that she was so participatory. Well, I think it truly is uh, a, a reflection of her love and dedication towards mm -hmm. Laurel. Yeah. And Cynthia Wade, when she was making the documentary, did ask Laurel, you know, how would you feel if people had a, would want to fictionalize this? Like, is that something that hmm. you'd be willing to give the, the rights to? And she was like, as if someone would want to do that, of course, was <laughs> yeah. her response. But um, she was absolutely, I would want as many people as possible to know about our story and what, you know, the community goes through. In doing your research, you know, on um, Laurel and Stacy and their story and Dane and, and everything, you know, it, what's really, you're watching a film, but you have to keep in the back of your mind that this actually happened. This is a real story. Yeah. And what's, what's really, it almost got mentioned, the thing too, is that not only were they fighting cancer, they were fighting, um, you know, not just m marriage, gay marriage, it was marriage equality. And they allowed a documentary film and exactly. director to come into their yeah. lives. So can you talk about just meeting, you know, Stacy and talking with them about what brought that decision and was like, yeah, we're okay with this, that the last year of my life, our lives together, we're going to do this. It was Dane who really mm -hmm. spearheaded it. I mean, that's what's interesting is that Dane, um, I think, came into their lives and, and wanted had a sense of outrage about how they were being treated and wanted to, to make a difference. And so he, had, he began to organize the press coverage of, of their fight. And he was the one that fielded the calls from filmmakers. And, and he, he brought Cynthia Wade to them because he liked the way Cynthia sounded on, the, on, her, on his answering machine. So I think that, I think probably the least acquiescent partner was Stacy because she was just trying to take care of Laurel. Mm -hmm. um, but, but I think that they began to feel compelled to do the right thing simply because of what was happening. But, but I think without Dane, I don't know that this all would have happened. He really was quite heroic and really, really protective of them and of their story. You talked about this earlier too, Julianne, but for both of you, um, this movie is about justice and equality and, um, and really same-sex marriage or same -sex and rights for same-sex couples. Um, did you think it was interesting that Laurel said time and time again, I'm not fighting for marriage, I'm fighting for equality? I love that about her. I mean, I love that she refused to be political about something. She was like, she was not there to do what Stephen Goldstein wanted, which they needed, they both needed each other, clearly. Um, Laurel and Stacey needed Stephen Goldstein to bring attention to their cause, and Stephen Goldstein wanted them to, to, uh, to uh, move his agenda forward, and they knew that, and I think there was not, there was not um, it, it was an uneasy alliance, but they both they both wanted just different things. And and as I said, the, I think it was I think it was Laurel's ethics that made her say, "No, this is I'm not I'm not fighting for a political movement. I'm fighting for what is fair." You know, Edie Windsor said, "You know, Laurel Hester is a hero for asking to be treated exactly like everybody else." So I think that those I think those degrees were were important to her. That that distinction that what they, that legally they should have had this. It was only a loophole in the law that allowed the, the benefits to be decided by the county. Corzine just had kind of not closed that loophole. <laughs> yeah, and so, and you know, it, it's such a beautiful, a beautiful movie and a great movie where you're 
asking people who have these certain beliefs, these freeholders essentially, and there's millions of them like them, where it's, it's, we're not asking you to even just believe in this, we're actually asking you just for your support, right? right? And so it's like, we're not trying to change your beliefs. If you believe one thing, that's fine. So how are they able to succeed in that with the freeholders where it was like, you have to accept this, you know? I think it was just all the pressure, pressure. Just pressure. political pressure. And then every, you know, it, at the, when it was happening too, every county around um, Ocean County, County yeah. uh, fixed the loophole. And so yeah. that, and they were just surrounded and the pressure was strong and they... Of course, um, I called them. And yeah. Then yeah. Called them. And said, yeah. like, you know, this is enough. Yeah. It's embarrassing. You know, so, yeah, but it was political pressure. Yeah, and it's true in the, if you've seen the, for those who've seen the film, like, for example, when the, the certain freeholder like doesn't show up to the meeting, that was true, and he was like on vacation, but mm -hmm. he wasn't, and you know, so it's all very accurate yeah. Yeah, to yeah. what happened. Um, Ellen, this movie, it's a powerful statement about changing hearts and minds. Mm -hmm. And during the seven years, sort of the country changed with the production of the movie. Mm -hmm. um, polls consistently show more support for civil rights, right? Mm -hmm. um, did that change, did that sea change sort of change how you marketed the movie, thought about who should be in the movie, anything about like how it was produced or anything about? I don't think so at all, actually. Yeah. I know, I mean, we were, we were always trying to make the movie we we're trying to make, which was an honest, you know, reflection of their, their experience. And what has been actually interesting in watching it, even at the premiere recently, sort of after, you know, a lot of the backlash post the recent awesome Supreme Court decision, there was like all these sort of new, there was de definitely new things that I, I was noticing sort of after a lot of the dialogue that's been happening. Um, but no, I don't think anything was necessarily adjusted or, or changed in any way. What were some of your favorite scenes to shoot together and some of the most toughest ones too? Because, you know, there's this, I love the scene at the beginning, just the, you know, hey, can I have your number? And, you know, yeah. you have the writing on the arm and it's so cute. It's mm -hmm. like, you're like, oh. Okay. You know, and you go there and it's just, oh, a piece of paper. It's, it's absolutely adorable, you know, and it's in the, it's, it's great. So what were, that, that, I mean, that's mine, but like, what are your favorite scenes to shoot? And, <laughs> so it's about me, guys. <laughs> no, but really, so what, what were some of the fun ones, but also what were the most complicated ones, the toughest ones to shoot? We loved it all. <laughs> yeah. We did. I mean, it, honestly, it was such a delight to, to go to work every day and to have Ellen there as my partner on screen and off. And I think just being together, um, I never felt, um, we just, we were just a team, yeah. you know, so everything felt like a, a, something that we were maneuvering and we were discovering. Hip, yeah, yeah, sure. we really were. Yeah. But I mean, that being said, I always liked the happy stuff better than the sad stuff. Yeah. You know, I loved, my favorite thing was the date, you know, where she brings me with a soda and I have to say, you know, I'm older than you. And she's like, oh yeah, whatever. And then we dance and, and it was just a really fun, fun, beautiful night. Um, and we'd gotten to know each other very well that we shot that near the end of the shoot. And it was great to shoot a scene where you're falling in love, you know? But also, not that I'm trying to run away the conversation, but also <laughs> even in the really emotional stuff, to have, have Ellen there as, as a partner in that same way just allowed us to, to I don't know, it allowed, we had a wonderful shared experience with it, mm -hmm. even when it was tough. Well, I can tell you there are gonna be a lot of jokes about Spike drama <laughs> for years to come. Oh, Spike drama? Oh, yeah. yeah. What's funny is I, I gave that T-shirt to my friend Spike, yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> How has this movie changed you, both of you? Mm -hmm. I have a new friend. <laughs> yeah, but you can say that about every movie. No, I can't. No, I can't. can't. You can't say that about every movie. I mean, I could. I go to movies and I have. I can have great relationships with the people that I work with, but I don't necessarily come away with like a new friend. And I genuinely did on this one. But I also feel, and this was something that I was surprised by myself, that I don't think I had a really a full understanding of what it, how painful it was to be closeted and then have to deal with a, a, a public. To, to come out publicly on a, on, a, on a big platform too. You know, I don't think, somebody said to me, are you kidding? You must have known lots of people have come out. And I'm like, yeah, but a long time ago, I'm old. You know, it was, everyone's kind of been in their lives and, and it's, been, it's, it's been a while since I've experienced somebody uh, doing it sort of so recently and, with, and, and, and so publicly. And it, and it certainly raised my awareness and deepened my compassion. 
And Ellen, you were on the project for seven years too. So, did was was there a lot of change with you with that, and just just your perspective on everything, and just yeah. So, I mean, when I was attached to the movie when I was twenty one, I was very closet, a very closeted person. You know, I'd be embarrassed to say how closeted I was. And um, it is, I will say, it was when I reflect back, it really does blow my mind, like how much my personal story did correlate and parallel with the development of this. And that being said, it would have to, you know, it would feel wildly inappropriate to be a closeted actor playing this role. Um, and, um, you know, more than that, it is, it, it's people like Laurel and Stacy that um, inspire you to do the right thing for yourself, yeah. uh, for your emotional well-being and life, and to be a visible person for the community, you know? They dealt with a really horrific situation and really stood up and uh, what make, allows me the privileges that I now have in my life that shouldn't be taken for granted, so. Yeah, and we'll start taking audience questions if you guys wanna start lining up. Um, but, you know, another interesting thing, I was watching the movie too, and then you have the documentary as well, but in the development of it or the writing of it, um, was there anything that you wanted to include in the movie but couldn't because of time constraints or it didn't really mesh with the film and it was like this is a really really important or this is a really interesting part but just doesn't fit there were some i don't know what you say know, it, not, there were at a certain point i feel like the script is what you know was longer and then you are limited by your budget you're limited by the days you have yeah. to shoot etc like i can remember where you did go to the there was a scene where, maybe you haven't even read this. No, wait, tell me. Oh, tell I'm not going to tell you. No, tell me. <laughs> okay, audience questions. Let's do it. Let's do some audience questions. <laughs> um, so, the, sure, there's things that, you know, you, you get limited by your resources when you shoot a low-budget movie and only have, what, 26 days to shoot? Yeah, well, even like the guys who played the freeholders, I think, shot everything in a day and a half. Yeah. I remember wow. thinking, Man, that's horrible. Those poor guys, mm -hmm. you know, so they barely had a chance to, 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 to really get going on something. We didn't have any time. You just, you just wish you had more time. Yeah. 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 Film of not seen it yet, so I won't ask a question about the movie, but Ellen, um, there are still deeply entrenched uh, beliefs about same-sex marriage and equality and LGBT rights. What did you learn in your interaction with Ted Cruz now that you've had a chance to reflect on it? <laughs> what did I learn? What, what did you learn? learn in terms of the perspective of someone that, you know, that a lot of us in this room probably disagree with pretty deeply? Like, did you, did you learn anything about that perspective or is it just, you just disagree with them? Um, no, you know, I've been making a show with Vice that will come out early next year where I've been um, traveling around the world and going to different countries and exploring the LGBT community and, and which, you know, what the country we've been in, different countries. Um, so I've had a year of these kinds of conversations. Typically they're more sit-down um, conversations with people on a, a really uh, extreme, uh, yeah, most of it, of course, is focused on the community, people in the community. But yes, we do address those and have conversations with people who are, I think, drastically different. And I mean very, very extreme to, um, you know, less extreme. And um, so it's, it's, you know, it's hard. It's hard, I think, sometimes, too, when, um, when it's a politician because you don't, you're not going to, you struggle to get to have a real conversation, yeah. you know? How awesome is it that we live in a country where I can walk up at a state fair and have a conversation with a senator who totally, you know, speaks to me and gives me the, and gives me the time. But, you know, I think it's... It's what happened with Ted Cruz is um, the outcome was what I expected. You know, I've seen Ted Cruz be asked questions regarding the community before, and it's a similar sort of, uh, it tends to be like, you know, uh, evasive. It's a lot uh, of rhetoric, yeah. Yeah, and, 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 and distance from one, you know, answering a direct question, shall we say. So it's it's hard to... It's hard to, I don't know, it, and it's, it's always a similar rhetoric no matter where I've been. It's the same, the same things are said to you um, no matter what, where you are in the world, so. Um, hey guys, so I guess I, I actually watched the movie a few days ago and there were definitely some scenes that were super like cringeworthy, especially the ones that involved the freeholders on the room, you know, like saying that they wanted a unanimous vote 
and like you heard the entire audience gasp when these things happened because they were so terrible. And it really got me wondering how difficult it was to cast roles as such or like find people who believed in like the, the message of the film so much but had to play these terrible, terrible roles of like being these people who are so negative against um, Laurel and Stacy. So if you have you know, insight on that, that'd be really cool. I, I think not hard at all. I mean, and we were fortunate because we were shooting in New York, and so that you have access to all these incredible New York actors who live there and who are interested in doing, you know, important movies. Mm -hmm. And so everybody, all of those guys, they've, they've, they all have amazing resumes. They've all done a lot of theater, and I think they were interested in the project itself. So I don't know that it was, it was difficult for them to play somebody who um, was espousing a view that was different from their own. I don't think that it was. I think that they were, I think they were um, intrigued to be part of a, of a bigger story. You know, and I think that's what we found with with our entire cast that they were there because they really believed in the film. Cool. All right. Thank you. Hi. Um, so I also saw the movie on Monday and was just incredibly moved. So thank you so much for you know bringing this important story to the big screen. It means the world. Um, Julianne, I wanted to ask. This is, I think, your fifth time portraying a queer woman in a movie, and. <laughs> 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 Taken. <laughs> and you've even, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think that's super awesome and interesting. And I just wanted to ask you how um, your identity as an ally has kind of evolved, you know, through the process of portraying queer women several well, times. Well, um, you know, <laughs> <laughs> one of the things that I always say is that it's interesting that that the, my res I've made like sixty something movies, right? And so, um, and and of all the characters I've played, so I've played maybe you know five gay characters or whatever, but that's not even the the um, percentage of the population that is gay. Mm -hmm. So it's always interesting to me, or so we know. We don't even really know. Um, that's according to a report that was from the fifties. So. Um, so it's interesting Probably to me. accurate. That's right, yeah. No, but I think it's not accurate. I think there's probably more. That's what I'm no, saying. I'm kidding. Under, oh, yeah. Oh, I get it. <laughs> I missed the sarcasm. Um, but anyway, I think it's interesting to me that so many people in media will point that out to me. Oh, I played so many characters. And I'm like, I don't even think, yeah, I just don't, I'm just, I don't, I don't even find that notable because for, for me, every time I've been attracted to a character, it's just because of who they are and their sexuality has been um, beside the point. But that being said, it is interesting that every time I am talking about something, I end up kind of in the, in, in the middle of LGBT um, discussions and politics and, and you can't help but evolve when you are exposed to, um, to so many discussions and so many personalizations too. People saying what you know, what kind of discrimination they've they've experienced and their difficulties and what it's like to be um, to be out or to be closeted or whatever. So I do I do think it has grown my awareness and hopefully um, my compassion and made me a, and a better ally. Awesome, thank you. Thank you guys so much for being here. I appreciate it. Oh, ah, the end. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So uh, Free Hell is out right now, so thank you guys so much, and uh, go see it. Thank, thank you. you. Guys. Thank you.